I'm doing good. Somebody want to kill this spider first? <laughs> I thought I blew it off. You don't see it right there. It's on the mic. I'm doing great now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like spiders? I don't like spiders at all. Have you, have you uh, known Trey Brown before he got drafted? Uh, well, I didn't really like know him, know him like the way that I grew up with like a lot of my best friends and stuff from fifth grade. But like growing up in Oklahoma, everybody knows everybody. So you know the next up and coming people. Family's always close to family. Like his family went to school with my family. So that's why I said like, you might not always really know people like how you grew up with certain people, but everybody knows everybody. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing is just being able to understand the mental part of the game, being able to know that not on, not as everything is not physical. It's more so just understanding leverage, understanding um, where people line up, understanding tendencies, who's running double routes, who's not running double routes, stuff like that. Because the more and more that you learn about concepts, it's easier for you to dictate what an offense is doing. What do they like to do on third down and seven or third down and eight? Are they trying to get to the sticks or are they a team that will go over and beyond the sticks? And the more you understand tendencies within a team, it's easier to understand and pick up what they're doing. No, I mean, I think he's doing pretty good. Um, you know, I think he's taking it all in. He's being able to learn from a lot of the vets on the other end. Like I said, I don't really get to talk to him as much because I'm on the offensive end all the time and with the new playbook and I'm just trying to figure out my job. I got to be able to focus on that a lot. But when we do have time to talk, especially like after practice, we're able to kind of understand where we are within the scheme of offense or defense and then just kind of help each other and talk each other through and give whatever advice that you can give to help. Your thoughts on the progress so far with the offense? Oh, you got to take your mask off. I can't hear you. Your thoughts on the overall progress with the offense, on the scheme, how it looks on the field so far? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we've been doing a really great job. I mean, you know, I think a lot of you guys saw the practice the other day. So when you take away that practice, we've been doing phenomenal in my eyes. Like we said, it's always been complex. It's always been a little difficult. But I think everybody's starting to understand their assignment, understand what it is that we're supposed to do. We're out here and we're, it might not be a lot of explosive plays that you see, but we're getting the first down. We're moving the sticks on third and seven. We're running the ball efficiently. We're doing exactly what it is that we want to do. And, you know, it's not about always being explosive or, or being able to look pretty on offense, but it's being able to do the dirty work. And that's what you see a lot of us doing. I'm learning it from DK. I'm learning it from Freddie. They're trying to be here asking me questions during this meeting. But, I'm hey, I'm a vet, but I'm still learning as well. So I got a question just to lighten the mood. So who runs your social media? So DK Metcalf is asking me a question. Who runs your social media? Who runs my social media? Um, a guy that goes by the name of Tyler Lockett. That explains a lot. Thank you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. If you haven't followed me, follow me on TD Lockett 12. <laughs> uh, who, who would you say is your funniest teammates? Uh, I would say one of the funniest guys on our team is Nick Ballore. Definitely Nick Ballore. Um, no, not you, DK. It would be Nick Ballore, Freddie. Not in any order. <laughs> He's not number two. <laughs> uh, Quandre. Number 14, DK Metcalf. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would say, I would have to put me in it. I think I'm pretty funny. You hear DK's top five? I already seen his top five. I was a little upset I wasn't in there. Okay. Tyler, back this offseason, you mentioned the, the tempo aspect of the offense is something you like to see. Now that you're seeing it play out in person on the practice field a little bit more, what does that mean for you as an offense? How does this kind of manifest itself? Well, I mean, it looks a lot like what we do in two minutes from the past six years that I've been here, but now it's more efficient in which there's a whole bunch of 
plays that Russ can choose from to where it's not just 15 plays like we used to have or whatever. Now you might have 40, 50 plays that he could choose from. So it, you really have to be able to understand the offense and know every single play and understand signals and understand like the terminology and all that type of stuff because it just goes beyond, hey, I just need to know two minute offense and that's it. You got to know the whole entire offense because he can call whatever play that he wants to call from the line of scrimmage because we got the words and all that type of stuff that goes within it. So that's why I said, yeah, it's very fast, but it's only going to be as fast as we are able to really pick up on it. Of, uh, some challenges with the weight of that playbook, how much there is at the line of scrimmage to get all that communicated, have all that verbiage underneath your belt. Like, how much more of a chore is that to get under your belt now? Well, I think, you know, we're all pros, so the biggest thing is just because we graduated college, a lot of us doesn't mean that we still not at school. <laughs> you know, we sit here in meetings all the time and we got to learn 75, 80 plays going into games. But now for us, it's more so being able to learn the concepts, being able to really understand why we're running a lot of these plays. Because once you're able to understand why, you're able to dictate what the defense is doing. You're able to understand why a lot of this has to do with communication, who has what, why do they have that, when are we going to do that, when are we going to call these type of plays. So the more and more that you're able to understand a defense, it really helps you out in being able to understand what we're actually doing on offense and the reason behind it. You and DK both obviously coming off big seasons, setting records, but I'm sure you're not satisfied with what you've done in the past. But what's kind of the next for you? How do you guys continue to grow and improve as players? Yeah, even after? I like the hair. I like the hair. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, inwardly we all have something that makes us hungry. I know he talked about that too. And like, at least for me, you know, I can only speak for myself. I know that he has things that makes him hungry and that makes him want to be the best that he could possibly be. And so he focuses on those things all the time. For me, one of the things that helps me stay grounded is just being able to understand, like, why I play this game. And it's not getting caught up in the reasons why everybody else plays the game because whatever they have to do to get themselves ready, that's what they got to do. So, you know, like for me, I play the game for reasons that make me smile at night, that makes me want to get up and actually come to work, that makes me want to get better. And I have a lot of reasons why. And those are the things that I focus on the most that makes me want to stay after practice or do stuff even during meetings, like all that different type of stuff. Because if I could stay true in the, in the world that I kind of create for myself inwardly to play this game the way I want to play, I can really be able to be the person that I really see myself being. But if I get caught up in the outside world, the fans, um, the, crit the critics, if I get caught up in um, the politics of the game of football, who does what, who gets paid what, why, why are they out here, why are they better than me, the world said. If you get caught up in all of that, then I feel like you're proving to people like something that you don't really have to prove. So I'm learning how to save my energy and really like be able to learn how to be great in a quiet place. Under catches last year. Do you, do you still set numerical goals for yourself like that at all? No, I never really set goals for myself like that. Like, honestly, like, even when I first came in, I remember in our, our receiver court, they talked about setting goals, and I was like, I really don't set goals. I was like, the only thing I really set is, like, just trying to prove to the world God is real by my lifestyle. I was like, other than that, if I, if I really come out here, my college, what was it, my college year at K-State, I told myself that I was going to try to win um, the Belinda Cough. And when I went out there, that was the hardest practice for me mentally because I told myself nothing was good enough. And at that moment, I was like, nah, we just going we just gonna to play free. And the reason I like playing free is because it's not about, oh, I got 60 catches. That's what It's like because I know that what's mine is mine. And so whatever comes my way, I'm more thankful, and I thank God for those opportunities, and I'm going to try to – be the best that I could be when it comes to that. I don't get too little or too much. I get just enough. And so that's what I learned, just being able to play free and play without goals and all that other stuff. But everybody's different. What do you see from Freddie Swain this year compared to last year? Yeah, well, I see Freddie doing a lot of great things. Obviously, um, I think he's understanding the offense, understanding certain assignments of where we see him doing kind of where we see him playing. I think that he can actually do a lot of things. I think coaches are starting to see that. He made a lot of great plays out there on the field. And I think um, 
just being able to get more opportunities. He didn't really get a lot of opportunities last year, but being able to get more opportunities and for everybody to be able to actually see what he's able to do, I think that'll allow him to really be able to get his feet wet and do a lot of great things on our offense. So you don't pay attention to a lot of that stuff. How hard is that to do when it's on social media every time you log on? I mean, you know, it, it gets hard, but everybody's so opinionated. You know, the world is so opinionated. And honestly, like one of the things I've really tried to do, it was a lady, I can't remember how old she was, but it was a thing going around on Instagram that said, how could you get 103, 106? People were just asking. And she was like, stay out of everybody's business. And so for me, that was something that I just tried to be able to do was, doesn't matter if it's my family's business, my girl's business, my friends, or even teammates. If I just stay out of everybody's business, I can really live in peace. And so, yeah, it gets hard watching people say, oh, I'm not this or I'm not that, or they say I'm always underrated. Like, yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, the real question is how do I see myself? You know, and the way that I see myself is something that the world may never see me as. And if I'm okay with that, then I'm okay with that because I got to sleep with myself at night. You know what I mean? I'm the one that sleeps with the thoughts that I have and the dreams that I have and the mo motivation and the stats and all that other type of stuff. So I really get to choose what type of player that I am. And if I give the people on TV or the fans or whoever the, the audacity to say who I am as a player, then I'm really limiting myself to only fit myself in the box that they put me in rather than seeing myself the way that God sees me. That's the only standard I try to live by. I look, going back to understanding receiver concepts, what defenses are going to do, have you always had that or is it something that continued to mature as you became a seasoned catcher? Oh, yeah. Um, man, I, I've knew a lot of stuff since I've played football, honestly. Um, it's funny because one of my best friends, Dante, would always be like, bro, play Madden, play Madden. Because when you play Madden, you really learn the defenses, you learn the concepts. You learn a lot of stuff, especially when you got to play quarterback on Madden and you got to know who to throw the ball to. You got to know when to throw the curl, when not to throw the curl. Understand, like, if a person's off, if they come in motion, who's on, who's doing what. But a lot of the stuff that just really helped me learn um, sports in general was just playing basketball. Like, when you're the point guard, it's not just about being good and making layups and making the passes, but it's about understanding the offense, understanding where players are going to be, where the picks, where the, the pick and roll is going to be, where picks are going to be for players. When the game isn't going good, who are you going to pass it to? You got to know who to go to in certain situations. And so for me playing high school in basketball, that's literally what I knew. I knew who to go to, when to go to them, when we needed something. I understood when to hold the ball, when not to, when to foul somebody, when to get fouled. Like I, I just kind of learned the IQ very, very early thanks to one of my coaches, Alan Blunt, in AAU basketball. And it just took over in football. If I see somebody playing defense, I'm like, all right, this is what they're doing on defense. This is how we can beat it. But a lot of it, I think, too, is just sometimes being able to take a deep breath and realize that it's not, a, it's not always about scouting people. Like, because when you scout people, they show you what they want you to see. But then when you get into that game on Sunday, you got to be able to scout within the game. And that's when you're able to really understand what teams are doing, who are they doubling, why are they doubling somebody, are they playing zone, if they're playing zone, what coverages are they playing. Like, because a lot of times they can show you something that they did before, but it looks a lot different. So being able to really understand how to scout within the game is what really helps me out a lot as a player. At this offense, do you envision that your role would change much in one way or the other? Kind of when it all, you know, get into the season, we start seeing this. All yeah, together? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't really know what my role is. I just kind of got to the place where I feel free just to be able to be me. You know, um, when you go to when you come to the league, a lot of players go to different teams and. A lot of fans and a lot of people aren't really just able to see what people are really able to do because you have to change your game. And a lot of people don't understand that sometimes, you know, when you go to a job, they might not be able to see everything that you can do, but when they give you a chance to showcase what you bring to the table, they see you blossom. And so like the thing that I've been learning is there's things that I've held within myself 
just because I knew that it wasn't the right time. And so the more and more that I understand the freedom that I have as a player, I could go back to doing certain things that I did at Kansas State that works, but having to understand, like, does it work in this offense? And if it does, what plays does it work on? And being able to go through those type of things so that I could be able to figure out how I want to run certain routes based off of the plays that we call. When, uh, everyone's doing special teams when you're back there at the park, the work with Nate. What stuff are you specifically working on during that? Uh, you know, I just do like fundamental stuff. Um, sometimes I do stuff like when it comes to just getting off, like making sure I'm working my feet on releases so my feet aren't stuck in the ground. Sometimes it's being able to work on my hands so because I know a lot of people might like to lean on me or get physical, so it's being able to work on my hands. Sometimes it's just being able to just um, have repetition, just cruising through cones so I can work on my routes just being able to get in and out of breaks. It's not always about running a route, but it's just about, for me, understanding the feet. I have a rhythm in my head. So whenever I'm running my routes, I try to come out the same way every single time that fits my rhythm. So in the off season, that's what I practice. When I'm out here, we don't get time, we don't get that free time in individuals to always practice getting in and out of breaks. So for me, it's about staying over my toes it's about staying as low as I possibly can, making everything look the same. So that way, if I can get the fundamental part down, then I can go out there and really just play my game and I can add a little this and add a little shake and all of that. But I always know when I'm coming out of my breaks. So that's why I try to practice stuff like that. Uh, that's like the uh, whole days ago, Pete talked about, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, I want to go back to your basketball for a second. He talked about that on Monday or Tuesday, how important it was for guys to play other sports. On about basketball as a point guard, how much else you look in that locker. You guys joke all the time, you know, someday Mike's gonna play you guys in the game, whatever, and all that. But truly, when you look in that locker room, how many guys are two or three sport athletes in a day and age in which there aren't as many kids doing two or three sports? Yeah, I think a lot of guys are really two or three sport athletes, and I know everybody has their opinions, so it's hard to kind of tell somebody hey, man, you should play basketball, you should play football, you should play baseball, you should run track, you should do all these things. But honestly, like, for me, speaking on playing multiple sports, I think it really helps out a lot. Are there cons when it comes to playing multiple sports? Yeah, you don't really get a chance to really just focus on one sport solely. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, he could be really, really good in football if he just focused on football and dropped everything else. But it's like, yeah, but then he can also be better in football, from being able to play basketball, from being able to play baseball, from being able to run track, because it teaches you different levels of competition. For me, yeah, I could run track and I'm losing to people, but like it teaches me another type of grit when I go play track. Then if I go play baseball, it teaches me another type of grit. If I'm only gonna do something that I'm great at, then I'm only gonna be able to excel in an area that I'm great in. But what happens when I go to college and there's other people that's just as great as me? Like I wasn't taught how to have grit when I wasn't as good as everybody else running track. You know, like I wasn't taught that same grit when I was playing basketball and I had to try to make another team. I had to make the starting lineup when other people was already starting and they just played basketball. And so like, I think it really teaches you how to be able to further yourself in whatever sport that you play, but inwardly it teaches you not only character and all this other stuff, but it teaches you how to battle. You know, it teaches you how to compete at a level to where it doesn't matter how much time somebody has to grind more than you, you know how to grind smart and you know how to grind enough to where your mentality takes you to a place to where it doesn't matter how much, how much somebody works hard, you're already there. So, I mean, I encourage anybody to play multiple sports, but I mean, this day and age is hard because, you know, like we, I grew up and I'm not old, so don't, don't think I'm old, but you know, we grew up in a time where you know, we had coaches yell at us and say whatever, and it could be disrespectful or not, but it really taught us that take the message and not the tone. You know, like if the coach had something against you or if the coach did whatever, we still had to go out there and play. It, we couldn't get no transfer transfer portal and stuff like that and go to another team and just play. If we transfer, we had to sit out a year. You know, so like for me going to Kansas State, it really taught me that – it's gonna be hard because Coach Schneider did military stuff, so it was gonna be hard. But you really had to be able to understand if you could make it at K State, everything else was gonna be easy. And it wasn't a lie. I came here, hour and a half practice, easy. We used to practice there 
for a long time. I'm not going to get them in trouble, but for a long time. And it really taught you, like, it weeded out people who said they wanted to play in the league and people who was just like, ah, football's not for me. You know, and so that's why I said, like, now I'm like, this the easy part. I just got to be consistent and grind. But they taught me that back there. That's like to go first in all the position drills and stuff like that. Why do you like to go last? Uh, I think, I mean, it's not that I don't like to go. It's not that I like to go last. It's just if there's anything that I've learned here in the league, it's that a lot of times, and people think this in life, they think it's a formula to life. And it's really not a formula to life. And, like, if there's anybody that's learned it, I could say that I've learned it. I've grinded from college coming to the league my rookie year. Had a phenomenal year. You know what I mean? Maybe not at receiver like I wanted, but I had a great year. Second year, grinded again. I went to go work out at a place just for a week or two. You know, I had an okay year. Third year, kind of grinded by myself and stuff like that had an okay year but you know my second year I broke my leg so I went through that phase fourth year I was going through it mentally depression anxiety all that didn't work out didn't do nothing came out here had the best season of my life fifth year grinded did all that had a great year sixth year had a whole bunch of stuff happen in my life worse than the other times I was dealing with didn't know I was gonna play because of COVID didn't do nothing came out here had had the best year of my life and so like what it really taught me was learn how to be great how do I want to say learn how to be great in every circumstance like if I go last learn how to be great when you last if I'm dropping the ball learn how to be great when you're dropping passes if I'm having a great day learn how to be great while everything is going my way I learned how to be great when I broke my leg. I learned how to be great when I was depressed, when I had anxiety. I learned how to be great when things weren't going the way I wanted to with my girl or my family or my friends. And that taught me that I don't need a circumstance to make me feel better. I learned how to be great without getting passes in practice. I learned how to be great without getting repetition. So that's why I like putting myself in that mindset because it teaches me to learn how to be great rather than thinking, I got to go first or I got to catch every pass in practice. I just left off of a drop that I thought I could have caught with one hand. But sometimes it's good leaving with, you know, missing that one hander because I learn how to be great when I go home. I don't need to catch the ball just to be able to be like, all right, I'm good. I can't leave without a drop. That's a formula. It's not always a formula when it comes to living life and when it comes to playing football, just being able to play free. You miss uh, not kick, kick kick returning and punt returning anymore? I forgot I even do it, honestly. Like, they didn't took me off of it to where I'm like, y'all want me, like, you want me to catch punts or kickoffs? I don't even know if I can still do that. <laughs> but, I mean, I miss it. I do. But I also know, like, the more that you grow in another area, the more that something else gets taken away. And so that's why um, I tried to appreciate it as much as I possibly could because at one point in time, I knew it was possibly be gone. If it comes back, I'm going to be ready for it. But um, for now, if they just keep me at receiver, then I'm going to just focus on that. But if they ever tell me, like, hey, you got a chance to still go back there and do some stuff, then I'm going to do whatever I need to do to prepare myself to help the team. Tyler, what have you seen of Dwayne Eskridge so far? I know he's not out here with you at the moment. What do you think you're getting from him? The way he's handled things mentally and what we saw in OTAs and stuff. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing just with him coming in without being able to get the reps and stuff like that, I think, honestly, I think it's going to help him out a lot because sometimes when you're not able to play, you get that hunger and you get that grit because you come out here and you watch everybody else and you watch people in your position doing stuff and it makes you say, man, I can't wait till I get out there on the field. Man, I can't wait till I get that mindset. And the good thing about it is it might – literally take the mindset away from I'm just a rookie and now you just being able to get the play because you missed a good amount of time to where now you get to go in you're not worried about if I mess up if I drop the ball or none of that you just like I got to get right because I want to do what I got to do to be able to help the team so I'm looking forward for him when he comes back mentally he's been learning the plays doing what he needs to do to be able to get right and when he comes out there on the field we're just going to work with him do whatever we got to do to be able to get him right but we're all looking forward to having him out there spotlight a lot between what he did last season, the track and field, celebrity softball game. How have you seen him handle all the attention that's been on him? I think he's done a great job. 
honestly, I think he's done a great job. Um, you know, me and DK have a great relationship. We could talk about whatever, whenever. It doesn't matter what time, you know, and um, I'm just proud of him, just the person that he is, the way that he's growing. He's becoming the person that he wants to be. He's learning more about himself. He's doing everything the best way that he possibly can. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a proud big brother. <laughs> it's uh, 4 o'clock. All right, that's fine. More questions? <laughs> did, he, did DK really go searching through your house for your gold board? For my what? Your gold board. Like, did, did he come in my board? house? Yeah. If he did, he wasn't going to find the gold board. A gold board. I don't have a gold board. Yeah, if he did, then he, he must have went in some places in my house he wasn't supposed to. Did he do anything for the best? Like, get snacks or get uh, yeah, you know, we're going to get to that rookie stuff here soon. We're just kind of giving everybody a break. But we're definitely going to get to that very, very soon. Are the, are the, is the receiver stuff a little lighter on the rookie hazing than some of the other positions? Yeah, you know, at K-State, we used to cut people's hair. And if they didn't want that, we cut their eyebrows. We used to do a lot of that. But we don't do that stuff here. We don't, we don't want to put them through that. But, you know, we'll do rookie gifts. Rookie Chris, like Christmas, all that type of stuff. It's not really that bad. The DBs, that's a different story. Did you get your eyebrows cut off? Nah. Uh, nah, I got my hair cut. Like bald? Nah, they, they had some designs in there. I'm not going to say what designs they had, but, you know, mine was a lot better than other people's. Let's just say that. Anything else, guys? <laughs> what are you supposed to be doing at 4 o'clock in your morning? Uh, getting better. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, appreciate it.